Hi, Paul Stacy here. I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada in my apartment. I thought I'd do a few short videos that describe the upcoming Open Education Leadership Summit as a means of providing some orientation. Um, the summit is being jointly hosted by my organization, the Open Education Consortia, along with the International Council for Open and Online Distance Education, and the French Ministry of Higher Education Research and Innovation, who've been really awesome partners. We've been working on this for, for a number of months now. Um, the event is uh, looking to bring together open education leaders from around the world, leaders from institutions and organizations engaged in doing open education, leaders from government who might have funding or policy responsibilities for open education, and leaders from across the open education movement. So this is a really special event to bring together leaders like this from around the world. It's a bit of a non-traditional event in that, uh, yes, we'll have some panel presentations that talk about emerging themes and trends related to open education, but there's an underlying theme for the entire event which we've called Achieve More Through Collaboration. And one of the ways that we thought we'd facilitate that theme and try to enable there to be some collaboration at this event is to have people engage in a parallel set of activities to the panel presentations and that activity would engage people in developing something we're calling a roadmap. So I thought I'd uh, short shoot this video to introduce the concept of the roadmap, what the underlying idea of it is and how it will work. So everybody attending the Leadership Summit is going to get a kit that includes um, post-it notes of different colors that are um, color-coded for a particular reason, which I'll explain in a minute, as well as some um, markers and highlighters that are also similarly color-coded. And lastly, they'll have in their kit an actual um, open education roadmap um, itself. Um, and, and so the roadmap is something I've been working on designing. So let me share with you what it what its design looks like. First of all, it folds a bit like a map. And uh, on the back side is um, really a summary of what is an open education roadmap. Uh, what are the components when we say open education? What are we actually talking about? And let me talk about those things uh, for a moment, just so that we are all sharing the same understanding of what is meant by open education. So um, the first thing that I address on the back of the roadmap is, is what I've called open assets. Open education involves creating and using and sharing a variety of assets that could include open education resources like books, textbooks, or simulations or animations, courses, including massive open online courses or MOOCs, but also it includes open access uh, which is work that's done in research that is shared, so the publishing and sharing of research articles. It also includes open science, open data, open source software, and open source hardware. All of these means of being open are generating and using and sharing assets within the education space and are essentially uh, open assets that are part of what open education involves. But be, open education is more than just the resources and the assets. and so. The second component of the roadmap activity will have you talking about and describing your open education initiative, not just in terms of assets, but in terms of the people and community that are involved. So who are the people that are doing open education in your initiative? Likely to be faculty and teachers, of course, but also librarians and curators, potentially ed tech vendors, uh, potentially uh, people from outside your institution, so associations or international communities or special interest groups and so on. There's always a set of people that are actively involved with developing, sharing, and using open education. So that's the second part of the framework. The third part of any open education initiative has to do with how it operates and sustains itself. So this gets looking at things like policy, funding, open practices, how you'll actually license things, how you'll share and reuse in them in terms of distribution and so on. There's a whole set of things there that are the methods and means by which education, open education is done. And we'll have the opportunity to describe those on our roadmaps. And then the last part, the fourth part of the open education frame has to do with 
what I've called benefits and value propositions. So what are the benefits and value propositions associated with open education? You'll be asked to identify those on your roadmap, whether it has to do with better learning outcomes, um, making access to knowledge available to everyone, lowering costs. These are all typical benefits associated with open education that we'll be asking you to describe on your open education roadmap. So um, that's what's described on the back of, of the map. And then on the, so that's that side. And then on this side is, um, is what will have us a roadmap network. So because open education involves sharing and reusing and giving and receiving, we'll be asking you to identify across all of those different forms or um, pieces of open education, what you might have that you could make available. What is it you're sharing with others that they could benefit from? And also, what do you need in terms of what other open education initiatives might have that could benefit you? And we'll engage in some networking activity where you can describe who you're networking with, who you're receiving from, who you're giving from, from around the world. Um, the biggest part of the roadmap, though, opens up to a really a big framework or canvas for developing a roadmap. So we'll start here in the top left corner describing what you already have. So uh, down along the start line here, we'll ask you to identify the open education initiatives you have underway. And then to the left, we'll ask you to describe what the open assets are that you're using, who the people and community are that are involved, how you're operating and sustaining what you're doing, and what some of the benefits and value propositions are associated with all of that. And then to the right, we'll be asking you to kind of write out a quick plan for how you intend to evolve your open education initiatives over a two-year period. As you document all of that, we'll be asking you to color code it as per as per this whoops as per this this legend where we have um, orange being open initiatives, green open assets, yellow people in community, blue operations and sustainability, and pinkish red benefits and value proposition. And at the same time, across the bottom, we'll be asking you as you do your map to identify what you have for others and what you need from others. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a fun activity. I've done it now myself several times. It takes a bit of time, but not that much time. And we'll provide you with a roadmap of the steps involved with how you actually prepare your roadmap and the time that you should be thinking about allocating for that purpose. It's fun and it'll be really fantastic as the source, the starting point for engaging in networking and collaborating with others around how to build out our open education initiatives in a more collaborative and coordinated way.